Hey, you guys. I just wanted to go over a few scriptures with you. So I know I was harping on baptism the other day. And I want to show you the very verse that led me to go ahead and get baptized. And that was this one here. Make that a little bigger for you. Hoping you can read my font here. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. You can't say it any plainer than that. Except a man be born of born of water and of the spirit. born of water and of the spirit. Born of water and of the spirit. Okay. Now, let me see. Okay, I just wanted to bring this up and finish um finish this up. That which is born of the flesh is flesh. Okay, so some of those people, some people have thought that this up here, uh, born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the king. Born of the water, meaning some people have perceived that to mean, you know, being born of the water, being born of the woman. Okay, well, if that's the case, then why does it say down here, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. Okay, so if being born of the water in the physical sense from the mother's womb is what he was talking about up here, why would he say that which is born of the flesh is flesh? And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said this unto you. You must be born again. Why would he insist that we be born again if what he was referring to appear as if it was apparently this, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. Okay, he's referring here. Here he is referring to um, the physical birth from a mother's womb, but what he's, his statement is, that's not good enough. You have to be born again, which is born of water and of the spirit. Okay, not born of the flesh. He refers to that as being born of the flesh, not born of the water, which represents the Holy Ghost. Um that washes away our sins. Uh, the water from the mother's womb cannot wash away sins. Okay? You have to be born of the water and of the spirit, not of the flesh, the water, and of the spirit. Okay? Um, the only reason I'm pointing that out is because some people, which I don't have a problem with those people. I really don't. I just wish that they could fully grasp this. And I truly hope that regardless of what they believe on this matter, that they were baptized anyway, regardless of what they believe on it. But, and I can show you even before, I, I even believe up in verse, um, 
must be born again. Let me go ahead and get that marked. The wind bloweth where it listeth, and thou hearest the sound thereof, but canst not tell whence it cometh, and whither it goeth. So is every one that is born of the Spirit. Actually, we don't even know what's coming next. If we're born of the Spirit, so the Lord leads us, leads us there. Okay, I don't want to put a hold on that and get a few more scriptures. Okay, here's another one that everyone should take very literally and really consider. Okay, let's go back and say, I know I'm not speaking to an immature crowd, so I'm sure you all know the story of John the Baptist and how he was preaching in the Jordan and all of this. Then came, then cometh Jesus from Galilee to Jordan unto John to be baptized of him, but John forbade him, saying, I have need to be baptized of thee, and comest thou to unto me? Comest thou to me? And Jesus answering saith unto him, Suffer it to be so for now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Okay? Suffer it to be so for now. You know, I have a, a habit of saying that whenever the subject comes up. But we really need to include the rest of that scripture verse. For thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. To fulfill all righteousness. Yes, to fulfill all righteousness. Then he suffered him. And Jesus, when he was baptized, went up straightway out of the water. And lo, the heavens were opened unto him. And he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and lighting upon him and lo a voice from heaven saying thus is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased well of course for f first of all this first act was an act of obedience to fulfill righteousness so if anyone thinks can can read this verse and think that with Jesus being our example, how can you stand, how could anybody stand there and claim Jesus as your example if you don't want to, if you don't follow his example? But yeah, suffer it to be so for now, for thus it becometh us to fulfill all righteousness. Which is, like I said, something you need to always include in there when I do state that verse. Okay, here's another one I wanted to bring up. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And for my personal interest, I want to include preach the gospel to every creature. Because this is important to me because I feel like I sort of have a job to stand as mediator between God and animal, the creatures of the earth. Um, we as mankind, we had a mediator being Christ, and he still is for the animals too, but I'm kind of like, I plead on the animal behalf, the animal kingdom, on the behalf of the animal kingdom before God, that they too might have a chance of everlasting life. I know that might sound a little freaky to some people, but they are part of every creature. So, you know, I have a tendency to preach the gospel to all creatures, great and small. But anyway, back to baptism. Okay, and Jesus says, He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe. In my name shall they cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not hurt them. They shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. But here, as you can see, the highlighted verse that I have is, He that believeth, Jesus speaking, says, 
he that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. So, I just wanted to point that one out. Okay, oh, I did this this one. I brought this up, Luke 3, 7 through 12. I brought this up because I wanted to show you here what was actually going on. We had, they had people coming from all over the place to be baptized, okay? If it wasn't the thing that you were supposed to do, then tell me why they was coming to be baptized. Here we see, then said he to the multitudes, Okay, the multitudes that came forth to be baptized of him. Okay, there were people, multitudes of people that came forth to be baptized of him. O oh, you generation of vipers, who hath warned you to flee from the wrath to come? Bring forth therefore fruits worthy of repentance, and begin not to say within yourselves, We have Abraham to our fathers. For I say unto you, that God is able of these stones to raise up children unto Abraham. And now also the axe, women, and now also the axe is laid unto the root of the trees. Every tree therefore which bringeth forth not which bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. And the people asked him, saying, What shall we do then? What shall we do then? And he answereth and saith unto them, He that hath two coats, let him impart to him that hath none, and he that hath meat, let him do likewise. And you'll see down here, then came also, then came also the publicans to be baptized. Okay, the point I'm making here is that people came to be baptized. They, uh, multitudes of people came to be baptized, whether it was Jesus and his disciples that they come to to be baptized, or even John, the, in, even until, uh, up to John the Baptist was um, murdered, you might say, uh, and it continued. John prepared the way just as baptism actually is still preparing a way for the second coming of Christ, preparing the way so that the people will be prepared. Yeah, maybe that's not the right way of putting it. But I wanted to point that out. But, you know, multitude, the multitude that came forth to be baptized of him. And again, we down here, then came also the publicans to be baptized. So they were coming to them to be baptized. If they weren't supposed to be baptized, then why would the multitudes be coming to be baptized if it wasn't a requirement. Okay, here's another one. Acts 2, 38 through 41. Then Peter said unto them, Repent. What's he say? Repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. And ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar, that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. And with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Save yourselves from this untoward generation. Then they that gladly received his word were baptized. And the same day there were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 souls baptized on this day. Those that gladly received the word which they preached. So, it was something you did. You just did this, okay? It was Jesus set the example for us, this was something that was more or less required. Now, 
Some will bicker back and forth whether you can receive the Holy Ghost before you get baptized. There's evidence in Scripture. I believe it was Cornelius and his family were, they had already received the Holy Ghost and then were later baptized. Um, so there is evident, evidence that you can receive the Holy Ghost before being baptized. But the thing is, people, we should be baptized. I know I'm not. I know a lot of these out there believe in the baptism, but, you know, I just want to get this out there and, um, hopefully more people will check it out in their scripture and really consider. And, and like I said, the one that really got me was the very first one that I posted. This is the actual scripture that enabled me that I, I said, wow, someone pointed this out to me, because I, I, had, I had read my Bibles since way back on, I was just knee high to a grasshopper, but, you know, up until that point, this scripture verse didn't pop out to me, but when I seen, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God, that was it, I was doing this, and I didn't care what it took, I did it, um, and I did it for the right reasons. But anyway, back to our scripture verses. Okay, I'm sure you're all familiar with this one. Uh, concerning Philip, Acts 8 through 6 through 38. And as they went on their way, they came unto a certain water. And the eunuch said, See, here is water. What doth hinder me to be hinder me to be baptized? And Philip said, If thou believest with all thine heart, thou mayest. And he answered and said, I believe that Jesus is the Son of God. And he commanded the chariot to stand still, and they went down both into the water, both Philip and the eunuch, and he was baptized. Okay, this is something you did. This is something you do if you believe, okay? And also for the remission of your sins. Repent and be baptized. Okay, this one here is the one that I was talking about, if memory serves me right. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all of them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished as many as come with Peter because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost for they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God and then Peter answered can any man forbid water can any man forbid water is this okay again is this the water from the mother's womb no it is not it is the water that washes and cleanses you of your sins, which represents the Holy Ghost. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized, which receive the Holy Ghost as well as we? Okay, right there is scriptural proof that what some believe as born of water and spirit, water meaning from the mother's womb, Right here is the evidence that what you believe about that is not the truth. Can any man forbid water that these should not be baptized which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized. And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Bold. Okay. Bold. Commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. But anyway, right there's that evidence that this is not considered the water from the mother's womb, being born of the flesh. This is being born of the spirit, the being born of the water and of the, and of the spirit. Okay, let me Okay, here's another one. 
And now, why tarriest thou? Arise and be baptized. Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins. Arise and be baptized and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. And it come to pass that when I was come again to Jerusalem, even while I prayed in the temple, I was in a trance, and saw him saying unto me, Make haste and get thee quickly out of Jerusalem, for they will not receive thy testimony concerning me. Anyway, this is just another one. Arise, be baptized, and wash away thy sins, calling on the name of the Lord. Thumpy. <laughs> Thumping! It should be thumped! Okay, it's a thumper. Okay. Okay, and I'm going to conclude this little thump session with these scriptures. It is 1 Corinthians 12, 12 through 25. For as the body is one, and hath many members, and all the members of that body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit are we baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, we be bond or free, and have been all made to drink of one Spirit. Let me read that to you again. For by one spirit are we all baptized into we are all, okay. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we be bond or free, and have been made all to drink into one spirit. For by one spirit are we all baptized into one body. Think about that one and read it for what it says. Now, I'm going to go on. The body is not one member, but many. If the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body, is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I am not the eye, I am not of the body, is there, is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? But now hath God set the members, every one of them in the body, as it hath pleased him. And if they were all one member, where were the body? But now are they many members, yet but one body. And the eye cannot say unto the hand, I have no need of thee, nor again the hand to the feet, I have no need of you. Nay, much more those members of the body which seem to be more feeble are necessary. And those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor, and our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness, having given more abundant honor to that part which lacked, that there should be no schism in the body, but that the members should have the same care one for another. You know, I wanted to add that in there because this is the kind of love for each other, the kind of understanding that teaches us God's will for us as a church and his the kind of attitude that he wants us to have one toward another so I thought I would throw that in there because it's kind of my kick these days of uh, the maturity of the church because you guys let's face it if we don't get this thing if we don't get this body in order and conducting itself as children of God 
and have the con conduct of a royal child of God, it's never going to mature. It's never going to come into the fullness until we can all start having the same care one for another. So let's try to have that uh, maturity grow a little bit in our lives and start considering one another a little more than what we normally do. Well, that's all I got to say for today. Um, I didn't want to go bumping on baptism yesterday and then just not, you know, do anything myself. So I thought I would do this today since it's pouring down the rain and uh, I really need to take a break and maybe tomorrow I'll go back out and start cleaning in the barn. So till the next time, I'll see you then.